far the worst abuse of the legal system. By far, there's not even a close second. It's that much of a joke. So you've never had a, a judge that legitimately knows that he's ruling in an improper manner. I mean, legitimately, he's just as he knows he's not following the law. He knows their lawsuit's corrupt, and he knows he shouldn't be aiding and abetting them. I mean, when I filed for summary judgment, you have to prove prima facie. They didn't do that. They failed to cite evidence. They failed to present, uh, provide an affidavit. They failed to provide witnesses. They failed to refute unclean hands. They failed to refute un, uh, judicial estoppel. I mean, I can go on and on. Each one of those should have ended it at summary judgment for me. Each one individually. They're all big deals. There's like nine of them. And uh, and now and he didn't rule in my favor at all and doesn't explain himself. I mean, it's so crazy. Then I get Justice Billings thinking that things will be different. Nope, more of the same. He's legitimately saying the same exact things Justice O'Neill is. And actually, he's acting a little, little worse in some ways. When you file a motion to dismiss based off subject matter jurisdiction, that's a mouthful, basically they sued me based off hypothetical damages. They said if we had to buy another house, that it would have cost us this much money. So therefore you owe us that money. So hypothetically, if we bought a house, we would have been damaged. But they didn't buy a house, and they weren't damaged. So you can't sue something. You can't say, hey, if I broke my leg, you'd owe me like five grand. So I'm just going to sue you for the five grand because you could have done it. Like, what is wrong with these people? So anyways, I filed a motion to dismiss based off subject matter jurisdiction. It's the only motion out of all. There's a lot of motions, right, that you can file pretrial. It's the only motion where the court assumes they don't have jurisdiction. And jurisdiction means they have the right to be involved. They have the right to intervene. If they don't have jurisdiction, they don't have the right to step in. They don't have the right. So a judge wouldn't have jurisdiction over two mass residents for something that happened in mass. A main judge can't touch that. He does not have jurisdiction. So if you can prove that they don't have jurisdiction, the court's hands are tied. They cannot be involved. They need to step back and end the lawsuit. So part of uh, having jurisdiction is, is what they call standing. To have standing, you need to be damaged. And it has to be real and measurable. And so they sued me off hypothetical damages. I filed a motion to dismiss. It's called 12B1. It's for subject matter jurisdiction. And again, when I filed that, the court's position currently, their position on this, because the law is very, very clear, their position is they do not have jurisdiction until the plaintiffs prove otherwise. They should be able to legitimately, easily respond to it and easily get it denied if they have standing, but they don't, they don't have standing. So again, it's been three years. The court's position is that they don't have jurisdiction until the plaintiffs prove otherwise. You could be in the middle of trial. And if someone files a 12B1 motion to dismiss based on subject matter jurisdiction, they have to stop the trial and the plaintiffs have to prove that there's standing and prove that there's jurisdiction or the court can't move forward and the case is over. So it's a big deal. So they literally can't decide motions. They can't do anything until the plaintiffs prove that there's jurisdiction. So when I filed it, I was excited because they their, their lawsuit is based off hypothetical da damages and they don't have any evidence. They don't have any witnesses. They can't prove that I caused these hypothetical damages because they can't prove causation because I didn't. So, I mean, legitimately, they couldn't meet any of the three requirements of standing and this motion such a powerful motion because the court assumes the plaintiffs aren't telling the truth and they assume they don't have standing or don't have jurisdiction so when i filed it i'm pumped i get a hearing date and i'm like it's over i mean they can't prove standing obviously the judge's hands are tied he's gonna have to end this so i go to that hearing and the judge basically starts calling my my motions frivolous i'm like what do you mean he's like because they were denied one was denied hold on if a motion is denied, it means it's frivolous? Absolutely not. First of all, judges mess up all the time. Second of all, motions get denied all the time. Doesn't mean that they didn't have merit. Doesn't mean that they were done in a frivolous manner. I mean, that's crazy. He's supposed to be impartial. He's supposed to be the, the one in the middle. Why would he ever assume that one of my motions is frivolous and not assume any of theirs are frivolous when every single thing they've done is frivolous? I mean, it's just like, whoa, pump the brakes here. Like, I could not believe what happened in that courtroom this past March 21st. I mean, it was crazy. So again, I filed a motion to dismiss on January 29th. They were supposed to respond by February like 20th. And they filed for their ninth extension. They keep saying, oh, I'm dragging this out. But they're the ones who filed for nine extensions. Seriously, like 
Twilight Zone shit. These guys are insane. Honestly, anyways, I won't even go down that road. But again, it's been three years. I filed for motion to dismiss. They should have had to immediately respond. The fact that they asked for extension is sketchy as all hell. Because after three years, they should have no reason why they couldn't immediately respond and immediately get my motion denied if they actually had standing. But they don't. So anyways, they asked for their ninth motion to a large. I oppose it, obviously, because these guys are crooks and have filed this corrupt lawsuit. I get a hearing. I'm so excited. I'm literally high on life going to this hearing thinking, oh my God, it's finally over. It's finally over. Finally, I'm going to get justice. Finally, this nightmare is going to be put to bed and these clown show Johnsons are going to finally get what they deserve. I filed the motion to dismiss. We go to this hearing. In the meantime, when I filed the motion to dismiss, they requested an emergency hearing to file, ask for a spickle order. When spickle order means that I can't file motions. That's a big ask. That's against the Constitution. Like, that's depriving someone access to the legal system. Now, spickle orders are rarely, rarely, rarely approved. And they're only done in very rare, rare circumstances. When someone's filed either a frivolous lawsuit or, or they continue to file frivolous motions. Now... <laughs> They filed a frivolous lawsuit and they continue to file frivolous motions. But they're the ones who are filing a spickle order against me? Like, really? They asked for it to do a gag order, a spickle order, and they don't provide any proof, none proof whatsoever. They just said, uh, Justice O'Neill said this is the first time a, a defendant's behavior has caused him to recuse himself, which again, that was just messed up for him to say in the first place, considering that judge uh, violated his oath in a major way. So, but they don't present any evidence. And so, again, I filed the motion to dismiss, So, but he can't touch anything. He has to deal with the motion to dismiss because he doesn't have jurisdiction until they prove otherwise. So we go to the hearing about all this, and the judge literally doesn't make them present any evidence, doesn't make them do anything, reprimands me. And I, my mouth, I mean, literally the last five minutes of the hearing, I'm literally looking at him like this, in disbelief like literally catching flies in my mouth because I was in such, I like, could not believe he had the gall to say my emotions are frivolous and I wasted the court's time and I filed 40 something motions so he can't take this motion serious because I've clogged this. No, wait, I filed 40 something motions. None of them were done in bad faith. They were all done in good faith. They were all proper. They all should have been approved. So shame on the court system for for failing me. Shame on Bernstein for pushing this frivolous lawsuit through and just continuing it on when they knew better. Shame on you guys, not shame on me. If you're going to call my motions frivolous, why don't you tell me how and why? That's That would be uh, the very least. Don't call a motion frivolous unless you have proof. Me on that hand, I got all this proof and I present it to the court. And he says, oh, I can't, I can't rule on these without evidence. Uh, judge, I presented you with evidence in an affidavit uh, proving that evidence is authentic and that evidence is uncontested by the plaintiffs. This evidence has been in prior motions and has never been contested. And this evidence is rock solid. So I presented you with evidence. I presented you with case law. I presented you with a properly filed motion. And it's my right to be able to file these motions. And you're just like, the fairest thing to do is go to trial. Fairest thing to do is go to trial. Hmm. You know who else said that? Justice O'Neill while he's depriving me of my rights. Fairest thing to do is not to go to trial. Judges avoid trial like the plague. They really do. Because it's a waste of the court's valuable resources if there does it isn't warranted. Now to go to trial, you need to jump through some hoops. You need to prove there's a viable case here. They want you to try to settle. They send you to mediation. They do all these things to, to, to induce settlement. And if it's frivolous, one of those motions will get thrown out. Or if it's just not a solid case, one of those motions will get thrown out. But this judge is like, no, fair thing to do is go to trial. Only way I can look at evidence is if we go to trial. What are you talking about? You have evidence in your hand as we speak. Not, not, not just some, a mountain of it. And hey, forget about that evidence. How about the fact that they have no evidence and no witnesses? That's not an issue. That's, that's okay with you. They have no evidence, no witnesses. They've told four stories. They admitted their original story was all lies. I don't get it. And I'm literally saying this to this judge. And he's legitimately just... And I was, I had high hopes for Justice Billings. I really thought he was going to, like, he would have to do the right thing. Again, the court's position is that they don't have jurisdiction. I went up to Diane Kavanaugh, at, and she's been, like, legitimately a, a very integral. She's played a very integral role in this. She's 
she approved a lot of this stuff. She's the one who writes the letter. She's just the one, the court clerk, that is, has her hands all over this. And I went up to her and I'm like, uh, Diane, so when you file a motion to dismiss, the court's position is they don't have jurisdiction. Yep. Okay, so why are they acting like they have jurisdiction? The law is very clear. Justice Billings has ruled on 12B1s before. And he says, the court doesn't have jurisdiction until the plaintiffs prove otherwise. But, yeah, it works for everyone else, just not me. Like, are you kidding me? And again, the plaintiffs, it's been three years. You know how easy they could get that denied if they actually had standing? So the court does not have a right to intervene. They don't have the right to make decisions because they don't have, there's no standing. And the plaintiffs cannot prove standing. But instead, I'm legitimately, like, get put on the back burner and he approves Grant him leave to file a spickle order. So yeah, you can have leave to file a spickle order, even though you didn't present any evidence to justify it. You haven't given me a lick of evidence that show that the defendant, me, has acted improper or done anything of the like. I, on the other hand, have provided the court with a mountain of evidence that these sketch balls have violated the law and made a mockery of the court system in such a massive way it's not even funny. I mean, this stuff, it's got, it's, this is so out of pocket, it's so out of hand, it's not even funny. I mean, I'm legitimately disgusted by the main judicial system and disgusted by corrupt Bernstein Sure, the most corrupt and sketchiest firm in the state of Maine. They're the biggest, but they're the sketchiest and the most corrupt. And it starts from the top. Joanne Fortin is aware of this. She's been privy to this. And she is has no problem with James doing the sketchiest stuff as long as he wins. Check that box. I don't care who we rip, rip off. We can rip off anyone. The nicest people, small businesses people. I'm a coach, an honest guy. Do nothing wrong. Didn't deserve this. Yeah, let's let's get that guy. Let's screw over the the most honest people we can find. That's crazy. That's un unethical. It's the only job where you you have a duty to tell the truth. You have a duty to be honest. Lawyers, part of our system, 